after having looked at the effect of aggregate demand shocks, now what we can look is the effect of aggregate supply shocks. Um, so um, we looked at the negative aggregate demand shock, so shocks that depresses aggregate demand and leads to lower output. So here, um, to be able to obtain compar comparable results, we're going to look at a negative uh, aggregate supply shock. So we'll see the shock that is going to lead to uh, depressed aggregate supply and therefore lower output. But then, you know, the question is what happened to tightness, what happened to employment and employment rate and so on. Um, so remember the expression for the aggregate supply. Uh, so it's Y S of theta. So we know the aggregate supply is the employment rate, which is F of theta divided by lambda plus F of theta. Here F of theta, job finding rate, lambda, job separation rate, times uh, productivity, times uh, the number of people who are in the labor force. So that's our aggregate supply. Um, so if we want to depress the aggregate um, supply, there are two things that uh, we can do. We can either have a lower productivity or uh, we can have a, uh, a smaller labor force, so a negative uh, shock to labor force participation. Okay, so we'll have, uh, and in fact, we're going to look at both separately because they have slightly different implications. So let's start with um, lower labor force uh, participation. Uh, that is a lower H. So what's going to uh, be the effect? So let's look at our uh, diagram again. So let's uh, let's look at the aggregate supply aggregate demand diagram that we can use to find the solution of the model. So I'll put my tightness here. I put my output here. Here I have the capacity, of the economy. Here I have zero. Uh, my aggregate demand. I'm going to plot it like this. And I have the aggregate supply that's going to look like this. Okay. Um, okay, so here I have yd of theta. This is not going to be affected. I have ys of theta. All right. And um, let's see. And here I have my original solution of the model. Okay, so I have output here and I have tightness here. All right, so then now we're looking at a reduction in H that's going to shrink, to shrink my aggregate supply. And in fact, it's going to shrink the capacity in the economy. Uh, so I have a lower capacity, say something like this. Okay, so my aggregate supply, similarly, it's going to... Uh, It's going to also move inside like this. So I have lower capacity here that leads to a, just a shift inside of my grid supply. So what's our new solution of the model here? So we can find it at the new intersection of aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So as expected, output is lower, so that's indeed a negative shock. But here we have a big difference with the aggregate demand shock is that the tightness actually is going to go up. So we have a higher tightness and we have lower output. And that's very similar to what we had found in the basic model where aggregate demand and aggregate supply shock they uh, implied opposite correlation between output and tightness. Demand shocks, because you're moving along the supply curve, you always have output and tightness moving in the same direction, whereas supply shock, because you're moving along the demand curve, you always have output and tightness moving in opposite direction. So that's exactly what we find here. Uh, so let's sum summarize our finding. So after... Uh, reduction in the labor force. So this, for instance, can be helpful to think at what happened when labor force participation dropped dramatically at the beginning of the pandemic. You can see here what we predict is less output, which is what we saw. Um, but um, 
without demand shock, you would expect a tighter market because, of course, people still want to consume the same amount of stuff, but there is much less supply. There are fewer workers available to provide these services. So, relatively, you'll have a tighter market because you will have, uh, you know, you have the same demand with, with less supply. So, it means that the workers who are left, they'll find a job very quickly, and people who want to recruit workers, it'll be much hard, harder for them to, uh, to recruit them because there's just much more competition on the hiring side. Um, so much tighter market, and that's consistent with what we saw in the uh, aftermath of the pandemic. Uh, so after a reduction in the labor force, what do we see? H. So we can start so tightness. We know what happens. Tightness is actually going to increase, so we have a tighter market. Output. That's going to drop. Okay. So now what happens to employment? Uh, well, employment L, we know that it's just output divided by labor productivity. Here, labor productivity has unchanged. Output has dropped, so employment is going to drop. And what happens to the unemployment rate? Well, this is easy. You know that the unemployment rate is just a function of tightness. It's lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta. Here, tightness has increased, so the job finding rate goes up, so the unemployment rate is going to drop. So here it's quite interesting because you have less unemployment, uh, an unemployment rate that's lower due to the tighter market. Uh, but also less employment, uh, total employment. And that's because you have two, you know, you have a smaller labor force, but among that labor force, the share of people who are employed is larger because the unemployment rate is lower, so the employment rate is higher. So more people are employed within your labor force, but the labor force has shrunk. And the dominating effect is that overall you have less employment. Uh, that's what we see here from the comparative study. So it's quite interesting because usually you always think that employment, you know, number of workers who have a job and the unemployment rate, they move in the same direction, um, which is true uh, when when you have demand shocks and you are when you have aggregate demand shock and you're moving over your aggregate uh, over your aggregate supply, like what we saw earlier. But when we have when you have shocks to labor force participation, that's not true anymore. You can have employment. So number of people who are employed and the unemployment rate moving actually in the same direction. Um, so that's an interesting result from the effect of uh, shocks to the to labor force. So here, uh, so one thing I want to, let me just like two things. So here, this thing here, the fact that the correlation between output and tightness is different. So this, we, we, we know that that's going to be um, different from eddy shocks. So by looking at this correlation, you can separate. If you see that tightness and output move in the same direction, you know that it's demand shock. If you see that they move in the opposite direction, you know that it's going to be, uh, well, this is true for labor force. We see that it's going to be actually the same when we look at a productivity shock. So that's going to allow us to separate this type of aggregate supply shock from aggregate demand shock. Okay, so this is a reduction in the labor force that we've looked at. Now let's look at what happens when we have a la lower labor productivity, which is another type of aggregate supply shock. So is what happens when you change uh, A. So lower labor productivity A. Which is another, this is just another uh, another air shock, but the reason why I separate is that it's going to have uh, some different implication. Okay, so let's try to find the solution of the model here. So let's use the same diagram. And so I have my tightness, market tightness, output, the capacity AH. My demand, 
of my grid supply. All right, so then now let's look at uh, drop in labor productivity. So we see that the capacity in the economy is going to shrink, some lower value. So the labor supply, the aggregate supply is going to be inside like this. All right, so, uh, so we had a drop in capacity because we have lower labor productivity that will lead to a shift in aggregate supply. So let me la label all these things. So this is my aggregate demand. That hasn't changed. This is my aggregate supply. That has been reduced by the shock. So now I had my original solution of the model, which is here, with theta and output. And then now I have a new solution of the model after the shock, which is here. So we see exactly like before, we have a lower output and exactly like before we have higher tightness. So this is really specific to, uh, this is typical of uh, supply shocks that output, negative supply shock output drops, but tightness goes up, so that's always true. So this looks very much like uh, what we've, what we had just seen, uh, what we have just seen for a lower labor force participation. But now once we look at employment and unemployment, some stuff's going to be different. So let's summarize here what we have. So we are looking at a lower labor productivity. Let's summarize A. Right, so tightness. This, so same thing, tightness is going to increase output. Y, uh, that's going to drop. So here, exactly the same as what we had with a lower labor productivity. So, uh, this is the same, same insight is that that's different from an AD shock. So indeed, if you look at correlation between market tightness and output, you can separate AD and AS shock. Uh, let's put the unemployment rate. So again, u is just lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta. Theta has increased. f of theta is, incre is uh, an increasing function of theta. And so the unemployment rate is going to drop. So here, tightness and unemployment rate, they are directly linked. So they always move together. So with the demand shocks, negative demand shock, tightness fall, unemployment rate goes up. Negative supply shock, tightness goes up, unemployment rate drops. What happens to employment, though? So you remember that employment uh, employment went down. So here, let me flag this. Employment went down when we looked at a reduction in the size of the labor force. Here, it's not the case. Actually, employment is going to go up. Uh, so employment L, so we know that it's output divided by productivity. But here, this relationship is not helpful because output drops and productivity has dropped. So you don't know which one has dropped more. So you can't use a production function to figure out to what happened to the total number of employed workers. Uh, so here we can't use that. So let me erase it. Another thing that's true of employment is that employment is just the, un the employment rate, which is 1 minus the unemployment rate times the size of the labor force. Earlier, we didn't use that because the employment rate was going up, but the size of the labor force was going down. So the two effects, you didn't know which one would dominate. Here, however, H is not changing. We know that the unemployment rate has fallen, so the employment rate is going up. So here, employment is actually going to increase. Uh, and you can see, so that's a difference with, with a negative shock, to, with a reduction in the labor force, employment falls. With a reduction in labor productivity, employment actually goes up. Uh, also, output falls. So you have more workers, but they are less productive. So overall, you'll have less output, but you have more, uh, more people who are actually employed. So that's very key. Uh, so two things are key here. So if you look at, uh, so basically here would be a question of, uh, what, let's say you've isolated that 
market tightness and employment have a negative correlation in response to some shock. So you know that it's an aggregate supply shock, not, not an aggregate demand shock. Then what you can look is you can look at the correlation between employment and output. If employment and output move together, then you know that you, you know you know that it's more likely to be a shock to the size of the labor force. If output and employment move in opposite direction, exactly like here, then you know that it's uh, it's going to be more likely to be a shock to uh, labor productivity. And in fact, if you remember aggregate demand shocks, with aggregate demand shocks, uh, output and employment, they always move in the same direction. So aggregate demand shock, you have the same, because you know output and employment are related by the production function, so they move together. Shocks to labor force participation, output and employment, they also move together, they are also related by the production function. So only with labor productivity shock, you know, basically does the uh, production function changes and your relation between output and employment changes. So only with labor productivity shock do output and employment move in opposite direction. So this is specific to productivity shock. That output and employment move in, uh, in opposite direction. Uh, so another thing, so this is something that you can use to isolate productivity shock. Another thing I want to say is that uh, there is actually a, a bunch of evidence in the US that in response to an increase in productivity, employment falls. So this idea that, that you know, if you have a fixed amount of stuff to produce and people are more productive, then you will hire fewer people. You know, it's kind of intuitive if you think that you have kind of a strong aggregate demand constraint, you know, like fixed amount of stuff to produce. And there is quite a bit of evidence that if you isolate uh, exogenous shock to productivity, when productivity goes up, employment falls. Uh, so in fact, evidence that L falls when A goes up. Uh, you know, there is a very nice paper by Sushanto Basu and co in 2006, for instance. There is an earlier work by uh, Jordi Gallis that looked at this, Valerie Remy has also looked at this, and and there is a recent paper where they find also that when uh, labor productivity goes up, employment falls. And for instance, that's not at all what you have in, say, a, uh, you know, a basic matching model of the labor market. That's not what you have. You know, if you take like a diamond martensen pisides model, you know, either with bargaining, like in the Scheimer paper, or with rigid weight, like in the whole paper, uh, what happens is that when productivity goes up, employment goes up, when productivity goes down, employment goes down. Um, but people who've looked at exogenous fluctuations in productivity, and that's tricky, you know, because you have measure of productivity is, you know, often it's a mix of actually changes in idleness and, and changes in actual, you know, productivity in the sense of like, technology, you know. Um, but people who've been able to isolate the impacts of exogenous shocks to productivity, they tend, so that's exactly what the Basu paper um, does. They found that when productivity goes up, employment uh, falls. And here, that's exactly what our model predicts. Uh, because this model has a proper aggregate demand. And so when workers are more productive, they can deliver more services. If you have the same amount of, kind of demand, households will hire fewer workers. Um, so that, that's, something that, uh, that's something that comes up uh, here. Uh, 